Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7. I'm back with a track guide for the current Daily Race C this week at Grand Valley in Group 3 with the racing medium tyres. Also, we're including the setup in this video for the Genesis, the Nissan GTR and the McLaren that I used yesterday. So if you want to check them out, make sure you check out them setup towards the end of the video. But we're going to try and give you some advice with the Genesis as a track guide because I think this car is the strongest car over one lap and it's probably the car that most people are going to be venturing into to do their lap time. So let's get into this and go through the basics. So to start off with, with this car, you do not want to rev it out too much. So you'll notice that I shift just before the end of the rev range because we don't want to just rev it out because you'll lose power with this car. So going into turn one, we are going to be looking for the 300 board on the left hand side. Brake bias free to the rear feels pretty good with this car. And yet, yeah, there's the 300 board, and we're going to break pretty much dead level with that with the Genesis. So as we approach it there, you can see maybe a fraction past the 300 board. We're onto the brakes, and now we're going to slow the car down, keeping it to the left briefly before we're about to turn in and take quite a narrow line into this corner because you want to keep it quite tight to the apex. See trail breaking into the corner, down to second gear. Then we're going to go back up to third gear before we put the power down, and now just be cautious on that power. You can see just feather in the throttle ever so slightly before we get 100% down and now this is completely flat out all the way through here it's all about just optimizing the line and keeping it as straight as possible so as we approach this corner here we want to get the right hand tire right up to the sand or the dirt on the right hand side as close as you can get it and you can see they're just skimming that right hand side you can see the ghost in front of us just skimming that with that little bit of tarmac now just be cautious you don't go too far on the left hand side here because you can pick up a penalty as you go to the left hand side but you can see again using that little bit of tarmac to straighten the line as much as possible now you want to keep the car to the left hand side of the track because we're going to break on that 400 board pretty much dead level again with that 400 board so as we approach it there onto the brakes and now we're gonna keep the car in a straight line for the next braking phase. So keeping that car in a straight line while we do the trail braking into the corner, and now we're gonna start rotating it in. So just past the board on the left there, the 100 board I think it is there, and we're gonna start trail braking in, down to first gear for extra rotation, then back up to second gear as we put the power down. And now just be careful on the rear, you can feel it slightly coming loose there as we put the power down. And then we're gonna get the car back over to the right hand side of the track. And then just as we're approaching the yellow line as we're crossing it over. You can see we're going to try and keep the car towards the middle of the track, but just as we go past them, the yellow line, there you can see the braking inputs going in now. And making sure you brake well before the, the end of the shadow on this time trial. So before the end of the shadow on this time trial, that's your braking reference with this time of day. So again, middle of the track, you can see just keeping your left-hand tire basically onto the yellow line in the middle of the track. And you're going to try and get this left-hand tire now right up to the apex, using that little bit of tarmac on the left, and again, on the right hand side, you're actually going to use a little bit of the dirt on the right hand side here with your right hand tire to help rotate it through the corner. Now, just be careful of the rear as you go through there and you put the power down. And then pretty much as soon as the car's in a straight line onto the brakes. And now you're going to be, again, using some of the dirt on the right hand side with your right hand tire just to help with the rotation. And again, onto the brakes pretty much as you see this overhead board here for Grand Valley. You're going to brake just fractionally past that. And now we're going to go down to first gear briefly as we rotate in for that rotation with first gear. Then back up to second gear as we put the power down. Just be cautious on the power on that corner. It's very easy to lose traction or lose the rear end. And now we're approaching the next left-hand corner, which we're going to use the 100 board on the right-hand side there. Very good reference to use. Very simple. And we're breaking a fraction before that. So just before that 100 board and now rotating in. Now for this corner, you really want to get the car rotated in and over the white line. So look at the left hand tires as we go through. You'll see the leader's ghost all the way over the white line there. And you can really see he's basically using that extra bit of track to help with the rotation as well. So now putting the power down in second gear, just be cautious of the rear on this section of track. It's very easy to lose the rear. And now we're into this right hand corner, which is very important to get a good exit all the way up the hill. So as you can see here, onto the brakes. Now we're gonna let the car rotate as we go through this corner. We have a tiny little bit of trail braking. You can see a little bit of trail braking before we put the power down. Now we're getting on the power. And again, not instantly onto 100% throttle, just being a little bit cautious that we don't get that throttle down too early and lose the rear. And now powering our way up into the next braking reference. 
So now we're going to be looking for the 100 board on the left hand side. You see it there. We're going to on the brakes just short of that 100 board. And again, you want to take a very tight line in this approach to this tunnel and all the way through the tunnel because you, you, want to, you don't want the camber of the corner to run you wide. So you can keeping it close to the right hand side, using a little bit of throttle to help rotate the car. And now we're onto that throttle. And then just a tiny little dab of the brakes just as we come out the tunnel. This is not aggressive braking. It's just a little dab to help with rotation then you're going to get the left hand tire all the way up this curb but be cautious you don't take too much off this corner it's very easy to pick up a penalty either here or on the next part again but you can see you've got to do it you've got to risk it if you really want to push a lap time you've got to take a big risk on this chicane because there's a lot of time to be gained on that part of the track up to a temp to two temps just by risking it and being aggressive through there but yeah you are going to pick up penalties when you're really pushing through there. It's going to happen because the track limits are very unpredictable. Now we're going to accelerate just flat out all the way to the finish. Just take the shortest line possible and the smoothest inputs possible through that section. And again, remember to not over rev this car because you will lose power if you over rev it. We're going to go over the line for a 45.890, which is a reasonable lap. There's definitely more time in that Genesis with the setup that we're using there. So let's have another watch of that lap from the chase camera with the kilometers an hour on. And again, you can see how we take that nice tight line, cautious on the power, then put the power down. Be careful you don't hit the fencing on the left-hand side there as well. It's very easy to hit the railing and lose a lot of time on that corner. But this is just completely flat out. It's all about smooth inputs, using the maximum amount of track. And again, keeping the car to the left for the braking is so important for this corner here. It enables you to slow the car down better, use that first gear for rotation. Again, you can see the rear goes a little bit loose there as I try to get aggressive on the throttle. Just be cautious of that. And then again, this corner, try not to run too far wide for this corner. If you run too far wide, it tends to ruin your entry into the next corner. So just be very cautious there. Again, using all the track, a little bit of dirt on the left for all these corners, just really taking advantage of every little bit of track limit you can get away with on this Grand Valley track. Again, 100 board. Again, rotation, you can see from this angle how we're using that little extra bit of track to the left of the white line. And now for this right hand corner, it's all about optimizing the exit speed. You wanna be on that power and powering your way up this hill. You can gain a lot of time by getting that corner correct. So again, 100 board on the left hand side, breaking just short of that. And then all the way through this tunnel, taking that nice tight line, keeping it as close as we can to the white line basically. And now this is all about attacking the curbs and just taking a risk and just praying that you don't get a penalty. And you can see how we get into that third gear, trying not to lose the rear on the exit because a little bit of instability can cost you a massive amount of time all the way to the finishing line there. So a pretty solid lap with the Genesis. There's more time to come off that. I think yesterday when we did this lap in the evening, it was around P15, it's probably top 25, maybe top 30 or something like that now, but there's a lot of time to come off this deal. So the setup that we used was pretty much a baseline setup that I did with this car. 9.6 on the roll bars. In FR cars, you generally go a little bit higher on the front roll bar than the rear and then very low on the damping ratio compression. Then you are going to go higher on the expansion generally with the FR setups that I've seen. And a lot of the time with the FR setup setup setups, you are going to go very low with the natural frequency. However, with the Genesis, I did like to go a little bit higher on the rear just to help with the rotation. So now we're going to run into the GTR and I'm going to show you a lap that I did with the GTR that was also into the 45s. So going into turn one, you're going to notice we can break a fraction later with this car into turn one. You can see you can be a little bit more aggressive. You can see I've also got the brake bias forward to the rear. And again, you can see you can be a lot more aggressive with this, this car and the setup that I'm running on the throttle, probably because of the natural frequency. However, it hasn't got the acceleration that the Genesis has. You can see that straight away as we come out of the corners. The Genesis just manages to pull away instantly on the acceleration. Now again, through this corner we're not going to use first gear we're going to stay in second gear with this car this setup is a lot easier to drive than the genesis so if you are struggling to drive that genesis you probably will prefer this gtr with this setup on you can see how it's a lot more smooth through the corners through here it feels really nice down to second gear again using the overhead um, grand valley board and above you there for the reference very similar braking reference what i will say is though you can brake a fraction later with the gtr you can be more aggressive on the brakes because partly because you're not going as quick into the braking zones but also just feels a little bit lighter than the genesis i don't know if it actually is but it feels it when you're driving it so again on that throttle just be careful with the gtr with the understeer on that corner it can catch you out if you're too aggressive and too early on the throttle and again 100 boards on the left you'll see it approaching as we go down to second gear and again 
just let it rotate be very cautious as we go through this section you can see we're going to get into third gear just before we come out the second part so just before we come out the second part into third gear again you see that little moment where it slips again did similar thing with the gtr it's just where the curb when you hit the curb it just creates a bit of instability but you can see on acceleration that's where we lose out to the genesis massively and still though a pretty solid lap with the gtr i think it's a 45.9 as we go over the line so let's have a little look 1 minute 45.9 so still again reasonably solid lap with the gtr and this is the setup i use with the gtr so again you can see the 96 setting 2025 for the the compression and the expansion though 45 45 now you might want to try something similar with the compression there that we did with the uh, to, to the genesis but you can see the frequency all the way down to 2.50 2.50 and that is one of the reasons why the gtr does become very strong when you allow frequency settings because it does allow that very low setting on there now we did also do a setup for the mclaren while we were live on stream so we took a screenshot here from the setup that i used for the race it worked pretty well actually gave pretty good end of lap race pace as well so yes you can see with the roll bars you might want to go six seven to be a bit more aggressive the um, damper compression, very similar to how we ran with the GTR and the Genesis, but the damping expansion, you can see 50 to the rear, 40 to the front. That's what I used for the manufacturer series. It worked very, very well with that. Now, the natural frequency, I don't like to change it too much with the McLaren because if you go very low with that car, it just doesn't really like the changes involved when you go too low on that. So yeah, hopefully one of these setups will help you out, whether it's the McLaren that we've just shown you there that we use for the race or the GTR or the Genesis setup. Hopefully you'll be able to find some pace in one of them cars. I wanted to get more than one setup done for this guy to try and help as many people out as possible. So yeah, if you do enjoy these videos, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section also if it has helped you out. I'll see you all soon for more videos and more live streams. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.